So this is advanced maze solver. You can use it at this link, which will be in the description. Uh, in the description. Uh, I only call it the advanced maze solver because I made a project before this, which was a little bit simpler version of this, and I added some new features in this version. So essentially, the main feature of this is that you can use these algorithms, uh, breadth first, depth first, and uh, A star search, to find a path between some starting no, uh, square, which is this orange circle, and then to finish this ending square, the green circle. So for example, you can see the breadth first search will expand outward like that, and breadth first search is guaranteed to find the shortest path because it kind of expands out uh, at uniform distances, like it'll it'll explore everything that's one distance away, one square away, and then two squares away and three squares away, and we'll see that uh, a little bit later on more clearly. Depth first search might kind of go in the wrong direction, and you can see because it just kind of explores a certain path, like as far as it can until it hits a dead end and then backtracks. Like you can see in this case, the first place it goes down to this is this dead end, and then it goes and then it uh, backtracks like to this part because that's where it turns, and then when it goes turns down here. It goes to this dead end first, like like next, and then it backtracks and goes up here. It doesn't uh, kind of expand outward, like alternating, which is what breadth first search does. So, and because of that, depth first search can find like an inefficient path sometimes, which we'll see again a little bit later on when we create a, a larger maze than this. A star search is a little bit different in the sense that it kind of knows the location of uh, the ending square in this case, which means it can kind of use that as a heuristic to kind of always go in that direction. But like for example, because it knows that the finish node is here, that it, it knows to mostly go right and and once it's down here to go up. Like it knows not to go down, for example. It would it wouldn't at, at this square it knows to go up instead of down because the the ending square is above it instead of below it. Um, which is sometimes incorrect. Sometimes you know maybe there's some path that you need to go in the opposite direction, like away from the circle uh, to get towards it, like go on some other path. If there was like another turn, another hallway, right? Um, but A star just prioritizes to, to basically just go toward the, the target if it can. Um, and so here you can see, for example, that we could edit the maze by just drawing essentially uh, and, cha and change how it's shaped. So we could add a wall there. Maybe we could add a path here to see how a breadth first search, like it to add kind of a cycle. For example, depth first search, it just skips past that and never explores that, even though it's pretty close. So, for example, you could see that in this specific case, actually, this is kind of a pathological example where depth first search just goes past that circle, that ending square, even though it's right there. Or if we had the end node right here, since depth first search decides to go down before it explores right at all, it'll explore all of this below it before it ever checks next to it. So depth first search is sometimes pretty, it looks pretty dumb, but sometimes it's useful in certain algorithms um, when depth is, is necessary. Yeah. Um, what else? So we can also create a new maze. So I'll make, let's say 15 by 15, which is just an empty grid. And here you can really see that the breadth first search really expands out like what, a layer by layer essentially is, is, is how I would describe it. Um, so we explore everything that's a certain distance away from it and that's why it's guaranteed to always find the shortest possible path. So this is just one of them. We're going by Manhattan distance here like you can only go left or right. That's just one of the shortest possible paths. You could also go down and then right but it, it will never find a really extra long path. For example, let's actually make it 10 to be a little faster and then I'll draw a wall here. For example, breadth first search will again find what the shortest possible path, or one of the shortest possible paths in this case, whereas depth first search will just go down and then kind of sneak around, and it finds it's really obviously, this this path is obviously too long. There's there's a, a shorter path that exists. Uh, a star is also guaranteed to find the shortest path, but it does it in a slightly faster way, because it, for example, in this case, knows at this position to go down and right. Whereas depth first search, it just happens to guess correctly in this case. But if we were to mirror it, if we were to mirror it by doing um, the end up here, the wall here, you can see it, it just keeps going along there. Whereas A star will kind of go at the wall directly 
and then once it gets past the wall, it knows to go up. Um, and I guess I'll show an example of, you know, like I said before, in some cases, what am I doing? We'll move the start node so it's like here. So A star will initially think to move up and to the right because it's just trying to go directly at the, the finish, the green circle. But then it'll realize it can't, and then it will kind of flow around and, and get out of that this this room kind of this this area, and it'll then it'll it, it can just go directly at the finish. Um, and then the last thing is that we have these interesting generation algorithms. So new maze under new maze, but depth we can generate a new maze that's ten by ten. These are all square mazes with a randomized depth first search. Actually, let's make that bigger so we can see. I'll make it thirty by thirty. So you can see we just have like this snaking path where it's randomized, so it just randomly decides uh, whether to go up or down or left or right. And then when it runs into a dead end, it'll backtrack and, and start forming a new path. And that algorithm in particular creates the, these mazes with very long kind of snaking paths, um, as opposed to we'll see prims and crust holes will generate mazes that are more they have kind of a lot of short little corridors. So what Prim's algorithm is doing, uh, Prim's is, these are again randomized forms. So Prim's algorithm and Kreskel's algorithm are normally algorithms for generating a minimum spanning tree. Um, so you can see an animation of that here. I'm not gonna explain what a minimum spanning tree is because it's not super important, but you can see that what Prim's is doing is it's expanding out from this, this tree, this connected tree. And it is kind of relevant because this maze is a tree in the sense that there are no cycles. Like you could never go start at a square, go around and return to the square, unless you like you go backwards. Um, whereas like, for example, that is forming a cycle because you can kind of go in a circle like that. It will never generate uh, something like that. And the definition of a tree is that it's a graph without a cycle. Um, so Prims naturally generates a tree like maze but in, it just does it in a randomized form in this specific implementation, which basically means it starts, it, so you choose some random start node and then just kind of randomly expand it outward. So any direction from your start, you could choose to go left or right. So it's similar to depth first search, but it's slightly different in the sense that it doesn't always like Go and continue to go in the same direction. It's not like a snake that just kind of keeps continuing on in the same direction until it runs into a dead end. It can go up and down from any of these like edge positions. Kruskal's, on the other hand, if we look up the algorithm, uh, you can see in this in the minimum spanning tree version, the classical version. So what it does is it, it connects the shortest first, even if they're not part of the same connected component. So it doesn't build a single connected component at the same time. Uh, at a time, like it can manage multiple of these connected components at a time. And similarly, in the graph, that's what, essentially what it does is it just randomly connects these components um, using what's called a disjoint set union. Is that what it's called? A disjoint set data structure or a, a union find data structure. There's two names for it. To, main, to be sure that it never joins up, it never creates a cycle. That's kind of how it knows that it never creates a cycle. Um, by using that special type of data structure. So again, similar to Prims, it also creates a lot of um, of these short little corridors and little like stubs. This one is actually kind of more even, but let's try, let's make a smaller one so you can see better. Like a lot of these kinds of things where it's just a little like, short passage for this, whereas again, depth makes longer corridors because of the way it, it snakes about so that's everything. It's This was a really interesting project. I enjoyed making it. Um, I actually, I finished it a while ago, but I'm just making this video now. Uh, but it taught me a lot about breadth and depth first search when I was more unfamiliar with those topics. A star as well, which is interesting use of heuristics, even though it's not as, uh, I don't use it as often as it's, and it's not as fundamental as breadth and depth first search. And it also taught me a little bit about prims and cruskles, which are also two important algorithms that I've, I've worked on in, in another project as well, um, which is the graph generator. They're pretty cool graph algorithms.
minimum span trees. It's, it's an interesting topic, and I think this this type of animation is kind of fun to look at. You can see as it expands out with those, with those gray visited nodes. Oh yeah, did I show? I don't think I showed the algorithms actually acting on these randomly generated mazes. So again, you can see yeah, depth first search in this example explores really far out in the kind of the wrong direction and then backtracks. An A star in these types of mazes isn't maybe as good necessarily because there's so many you know turns and corridors and small passageways. Um, so it can't it, most of the time it can't go directly to the finish. But it's still pretty good. It knows and just for example in this in this case it tries to go up and right immediately, which means it goes this wrong direction for a little bit, but it still finds you the shortest path in the end, and it is often faster than breadth first search. Um, and I'll try it. Let's see it on another maze. One more. So yeah, in this case, A star is gonna be perfect. It just goes straight to the right. Depth first search. Yeah, it takes a wrong turn, and so it'll take forever to come back and realize that it, it took a wrong turn because it explores everything below it until it backtracks. And breadth first search is nice because it'll explore kind of in layers around it. And given a generated maze, you could also just move the end without uh, without re having to regenerate all the walls. So we could also have, you know, the finish line there. And depth first search will maybe be even worse this time because it'll go, oh no. It goes left before it goes up, I guess. Okay, so that's everything.